welcome Nigel Rogers. Thanks, everyone. It's lovely to be in this hall again. I'm going to start off with a song by the Chilean singer Victor Jara uh, that is, he was a part of the Nueva Cancion movement. And he was, as well as being a, a singer-songwriter, a, a dancer in, in the National Ballet. And, uh, and he traveled the country. Um, and one of the people he met was a woman named Angelita Wenuman, who was a weaver. And this is a song that he wrote about, uh, about Angelita um, and her weavings. En el valle de Pocomó, donde rebota el viento del mar, donde la lluvia cría los muscos de la angelita, bueno mar. Entre el manío y los guayes, el arellano y el pitrán, Entre el aroma de las chicas y la angelita de Numán. Cuidada por cinco perros, un hijo que dejó el amor, sencilla como su chacrita, el mundo La sangre roja del copihue corre sus venas en un man junto a la luz de una ventana de angelita cuida. Sus manos bailan en la hebra como alitas de chingó. Es un milagro como teje hasta el aroma de la flor. That little, last little line said, it's a miracle how she weaves even the, the aroma of the, the scent of the flower. En tus telares, angelita, hay tiempo, lágrima y sudor. Están las manos ignoradas desde mi pueblo creador. Después de meses de trabajo, el chamal busca comprador. Y como pájaro enjaulado, canta para él. people of our hemisphere, the first people of this hemisphere, don't really recognize settler boundaries. So at the same time, I'd like to acknowledge that the people of the Mapuche people in Chile have their own struggles, and they are all connected, and we should think for a moment and thank them for their part in making 
Chile, a diverse and rich country, as the First Nations have made for this country. And then I'd like to thank everybody else, and I think I've got to thank just about everybody in the room. I'd like to thank Beverly and Kevin and Mike and Katie for coming and helping set up, and for Susan, as ever, doing wonderful refreshments. Uh, my, uh, Keely is taking photographs, and we have Efren making a video. And I particularly want to thank all the people who donated uh, for our Lent, didn't donate, but Lent, and very kindly lent their beautiful RPRs for this exhibition. So we have people who are here, some of them as visitors, and some of them are visitors who uh, lent their work from Courtney, from Bowser, from Vancouver, from Nanaimo, and the Chosen, as well as Victoria. And thank you all, all of you who uh, lent your work, and it's credited in the write-ups of the RPRs who lent their work, and we're very grateful for it. I've taken good care of them, and here they are. Presentation on the art of resistance through RPRs in Chile. And RPRs have been made for some decades in Chile, and uh, Violeta Parra, the famous uh, artist in Chile, made some too. But it was during the time of Pinochet that poor women from the barrios came together under the protection of the Catholic Church and made these RPRs. And there are several things about them. One is that they are a record, they are an archive of that era. They tell the story of what was going on. They wanted the people in the world to know what they were going through. And then they wanted to also have an opportunity to come together in community to share what was happening in their lives in the terrible regime of Pinochet. And it also provided some income. They were sold around the world, and the money was returned to them, mostly through nonprofit societies were able to return the money, again, through the Catholic Church, so that the women did have some income. They look very, uh, sometimes very subdued, because they didn't use a new fabric most of the time. They used the fabric of their own clothing, and very often the clothing of their disappeared people. And the name RPR comes from the Spanish word for sack, because the back of them uh, are flower sacks. And if you turn them over, you would see the marks of the flower, the flower sack on them. Mostly they were that size, but there are a few bigger ones. These ones took a woman a month to make in her spare time, and some of these big ones would take several months, and probably several women worked on them. This was a time of, uh, since 19, September 11, 1973, when the very popular government of President uh, Salvador Allende was overthrown in a military coup, backed by the CIA of the United States and supported by many countries in the world, including Britain. Margaret Thatcher considered Pinochet to be a great friend of hers. And the regime, the resistance began immediately as people were murdered, disappeared, detained and tortured, resistance came in many forms. And one of the forms was making RPRs which documented other forms of resistance. So you see rallies, you people, people demonstrating, people coming together to make their lives possible. And this reign of terror lasted until 19, <coughs> 1990 when civilian rule was restored. But during that time, when many forms of resistance were developed, it turned out that things were not perfect. Uh, in Chile, after the restoration of civilian rule, and there are RPOs that were made after that and continue to be made, documenting right up until about a couple of weeks ago. The last RPO I got a slide of was made two weeks ago of what is happening in Chile today, and we'll talk about that later. Hundreds of them were made, and they were distributed around the world so that the story of this, the history, the story and the history of this part of Chile became part of many people's lives everywhere. And so we're going to look at a couple of uh, short videos. The woman who has mentored me and lent me uh, videos and 
me some of the RPRs, and I have lent her some for exhibitions, has organized about 200 exhibitions of RPRs around the world. Originally, they were just considered handicraft of poor women. They were denigrated, they weren't respected, uh, they were just something, little scraps of handicraft that, that women made. But over the years, they have be artists and art critics have realized what a document they are and what wonderful work they are. And there have been about 200 exhibitions in the last 10 years around the world, in every hemisphere, of our Pieras. Until recently, they have been exhibited at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London and the Tate last week. There was an exhibition and a workshop about our Pieras in the Tate in London. So they are now respected and much sought after in prestigious works of art. So those of us who are fortunate enough to own them uh, now can say we have uh, a collection of really very priceless and irreplaceable art. So we'll look at these, and I think that's all I need to say about them now. Uh, some of it, we'll learn more through the videos and the slideshow that will follow the videos. There are two short videos, one of Roberta Bacchick uh, taking us through a, an exhibition that has been mounted in an art gallery and paid for and much more elegant than the way we've done it, but I kind of like to think that our Pieristas might like the way we've done it here. It's sort of community and uh, not so fancy as a state art gallery. And we will we'll go from there, and after that, there's a workshop of, of, we'll see that video, and then we'll see a video of a workshop that was done in Zimbabwe among uh, a group of villagers and very poor people in Zimbabwe who really took to making the form, art form of an RPR to document their injustices. Because the main purpose of the RPRs has developed is it's a form of resistance against injustice of all kinds. Many, many years and came to Europe in 1998. And so much of my collection are pieces called Arpilleras that come from Chile that were done during the dictatorship. future name of the section will be Textile Narratives of Conflict, and it will be concentrating on arpilleras, quilts, and other textiles that have as a basis the narratives of conflict and the way women have experienced it during the conflict or the aftermath. The section will contain photographs but also will document all the exhibitions in Northern Ireland or in other countries as well as associated activities and workshops where women start making their own textiles describing the conflicts they are living presently.
This is a, a, a Chilean one uh, showing a demonstration and uh, some of the violence that the people were being subjected to. Next one. And this, this slide was taken in, in Geneva, Switzerland at a very uh, prestigious art gallery there which had a lot of money and a lot of funding. Roberta was there and she was, this is, she was able to bring one of the art theoristas to, to Switzerland and it was a very big thing for Aurora who was a cleaning lady by profession and she never had a passport, she never left Chile. So it was a, a very exciting event for her and it was really exciting for the people who saw the RPOs to actually meet a woman who makes them. In fact, there are RPOs made by this woman uh, in this exhibition and this one in the slideshow. She is still, she's part of a small group of women who are still making RPOs about what's going on in Chile today. This is the RPR that was chosen as the signature uh, for publicity, for postcards and posters of the show on what was called Disobedient Objects at the Victoria and Albert Museum a few years ago. There were many things in this exhibition besides RPRs, including Zapatista dolls and a banner that a friend of mine made on the first women's uh, march from Wales to Greenham Common. And it was the first banner that was made. In fact, women used it as a changing cloth to change their babies on. And people used it to, as, as a cover, and some people slept under it, and it became a, a very famous banner. It's now in a museum. And this is a very complex one, a very different, very stark. Uh, the peace dove is falling out of the sky. You can see the shackled feet of the prisoners. And the women are, are coming to to find the look, search for the disappeared, and they call for the release of political prisoners, but the police are coming after them while the eyes of the people are watching them. And eyes have become very important in Chile. Yes. <coughs> now in the present situation where a number of people have been killed, 700 people were arrested, thousands have been wounded, one of the most uh, horrific thing of the present crisis in Chile is the blinding of people demonstrating. And 347 people have lost their eyesight in the demonstrations uh, by being shot at by, by the, the military and the police. And so the eyes have become one of the symbols of the present uh, protest. The uh, eyes, eyes are, uh, this, this is a, a one of the present struggle. The present struggle started when they raised the price of the transit to 30 pesos. And suddenly students and working people took to the streets and, and eventually ended up in a general strike. And what's happening, still continuing to happen today, was the, the um, the catalyst was raising the transit fares to 30 pesos. And so that's why it has that little sign. And that one was just made a few weeks ago and, and sent to Roberta, she sent me the, uh, sent me the slide and the eyes. This was a very popular uh, theme, or not popular, but I wouldn't say that's not the right word. A much used theme during the Pinochet era the women are dancing the national dance of Chile by themselves instead of with a partner. And if you see, every woman has on her breast a picture of a disappeared or murdered uh, loved one. And that's the loved one that they would be dancing with, but they are dancing alone. And there are many RPRs with this theme on it from that time. This is the one, one of the ones that was made in the workshop in Zimbabwe. Uh, showing very much, I think, the, the, the feeling of, of fear and confusion that people were living under in Zimbabwe at that time. And this is a, a Peru, women from Peru came to learn from the Chilean women how to make RPOs. And they make RPOs in Peru. They're not very as political as the Chilean ones, but they are very much concerned with showing uh, 
the, the land, showing their produce, showing the fruit and the vegetables, and the life of food, essentially, very important to their life. And they use new fabrics, so they're much brighter and more vibrant. There's several of them over here on the wall where I have some which are inspired. Art here is inspired by Chilean art here. And these are women in Mexico, people in Mexico demonstrating with their RPR, which says we are seeds. And this is a, a Chilean RPR, which is showing a very uh, dark and, and uh, terrible time of, of the Pinochet era of, of torture. During that era of Pinochet, many people went into exile. Some of them are in this room today. There are exiles. Canada uh, welcomed, actually, exiles from, from Chile, and many came. And to many people, this was a great sorrow, saying goodbye to people that, whose lives were in such danger that they had to leave the country. So this is an RPR about the exiles. And this one, you can read it yourselves. That was made in Canada by uh, Chileans in Toronto. There's a small group of, of women in Toronto from Chile who make our beers and also give workshops in them. And this was one of them that was made there, remembering September the 11th and the assassination of Salvador Allende. There's a women's organization in Toronto that gives uh, therapy and counseling and material and uh, practical life skills assistance to women who come to, to Canada particularly as victims of sexual violence and domestic violence. And so there are a number of women in Toronto who came from Mexico who took this workshop and made uh, RPRs of their experiences in Mexico. <coughs> One more in the next slide from that group in Toronto. And this was an exhibition in uh, Derry in Northern Ireland, and Roberta asked me to come and open it and show some slides of the art of resistance of other forms. And it was a very beautiful exhibition and a very lovely exhibition hall. This was funded by the European uh, Union. So I, I know that some of these people are really concerned because the European Union funded arts uh, very generously. And with Brexit, uh, many artists are going to lose the, their funding and art institutions. The absolutely gorgeous woman in the front in the white jacket was the mayor of Derry, and she was something like 24 years old. She also, I should have shown her feet because she had the most amazing high heels on. <laughs> now she could even walk in them, let alone stand in them. But she came to open it. So these are art shows that um, are, are able to be shown in, in very good places. Not that this isn't a good place. This is a wonderful place. But it's different. Mexico. This is a very unusual Chilean one because it looks more like a painting. It doesn't have some of the same uh, aspects. After you look at art beers for a while, you can begin to see the differences in the artists and the differences in the styles of the women who make them. But this is a, a very sad one with the back, black clouds coming and the uh, peace bell falling out of the sky. When I went to the exhibition in Derry, there was a, this young man was funded by the European Union to, be, to learn to be an, uh, an art gallery curator. And, and he was from Belgium, and he was working on this show. And he made his own art fair. He was very proud of it. And it's about the obstacles to same-sex marriage. He has dinosaurs and all kinds of things in it. <laughs> he was very proud of it. And this is... Uh, showing the, the women themselves, because the RPRs are made by women who are called RPRistas, and I think it's quite wonderful to have an RPR which shows them coming together in a, in a workshop, in a safe situation, 
and making their art fairs together because that form of community of coming together and sharing their lives was very important to them and still is. And the next slide is actually of a poem that I'm going to try and read because I don't think most everybody can read it from there. And it's about the Arpiaristas. It is love that sustains their every stitch. Broken and shattered by loss and murder, Daily poverty to fuel massive wealth weighed by warehouses of weapons and phalanxes of brutalized young men. Women search for a tomato, a beef bone, a scrap of fish. They scrub floors on bony knees and always under their aprons an image of a disappeared beloved one against the still beating, still waiting heart. Our Pierre is just sold with scraps of clothing, not worn now, only scented with the memory of happier times. They open their veins to find thread to sew reality, strip sinews to letter a banner. Donde están? Where are they? And in frozen moments of rest, their silent needles pierce the sacking recreate lost families, show their life of soup kitchens, bread ovens, communal <coughs> gardens, stolen electricity. They create with anger and sadness rallies to show their resistance. They harvest the dreams of peace with fruit bearing in abundance for all those who share the gathering. And in the happy figures fastened against the unending sunrises over the Andes, they stitch that courage is still possible. Their hope renews every morning in the chilled morning sunrise, and love never sets in the ocean. Life with the disappeared continues, and their faith embroiders perpetual remembrance on gentle arpieras. And there's one last slide. Inspired by arpieras, this quote of Pablo Neruda in Spanish and Portuguese, that action is the mother of hope. <coughs> and it's, that, it's the symbol of all the resistance that goes on in the world, not just in Chile. And Pablo Neruda was a, a very famous poet of Chile, and he died during the time of, of Pinochet taking over. They say the reason was that they were not able to get an ambulance to his home when he was sick to take him to the hospital, but the army had blocked it off and he couldn't get to the hospital and he died at home. Um,